uh, right where we're standing at right now, uh, it's been long wall mine under uh, the stream that you can hear running off to the right is a trout stock stream and there's methane gas seeping up within, well, I'd say probably within 20 yards of where I am right now to come up to the bottom after long wall mining. A lot of our water is going down into the mines and once it gets into the mines and it becomes very suspect for use. The bromide levels are just, they're just so high, you know, you're running 4,000 parts per billion and uh, that's just unheard of coming out of coal mining. Uh, the highest that I've had recorded in the intra state, which research done by Natasha Kahn, you know, it was 600 parts per billion, and we're running 4,000 parts per billion. So we're extremely high in bromide, so we feel that it's been, we feel that it's been compromised. We know that both the EPA and the DEP are severely underfunded. Their people can't get out. 12% of the Marcellus wells drilled in Pennsylvania are never inspected once. Citizen water monitors, trained people, can get out and be the eyes of these, our regulatory agencies. Uh, we basically here to assist, to point out we're an early warning system saying, hey, we got a problem down here. You better come down and check it out. Now uh, we've done this for six sites and every one of these sites that we've done this, uh, either been proven by the DEP or West Virginia Research Institute to have anomalies in them and they are problem spots. So the citizens play a very important role because we live here, we see what's going on. Uh, people that don't live here don't see it. Uh, our school bus drivers, our uh, people that mail carriers or PennDOT workers, they're out here every day. They, they see things that are going on and notify us by the time the DEP can get here. In many cases, the anomaly's gone, but we live here. We can be here in, in a short time and get some sampling and at least find out what the electronic conductivity is or the TDS is. If the regulatory agencies do not respond to our request after we have the scientific data, then, well, then that will be pushed further up the ladder and it'll take its course wherever it may end up. But it's not going to stop. We're going to we're going to keep pushing until we get the water and air cleaned up. It's it's not about money and it's not about suing, and that's definitely not what it's about. It's about keeping the air and the water clean for future generations to come, which is actually part of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Article One, Section Twenty Seven, that guarantees every resident pure water and clean air. And all we're doing is just trying to get those that are responsible to regulate this to follow the regulations founded in the Constitution. <laughs>